Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D hyphen oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Yeah, we're entering into the kind of summer doldrums here. Yeah. Uh, I know. Not, I'm not, not a lot, digging it. Not a lot going going on, but uh, we can, we can kind of look at the bigger picture on the S and P's. Okay, that sounds uh, good to me. Not a lot to say there, but okay. Uh, 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 chart one, uh, the bottom. This is the uh, monthly S SPX uh, VIX ratio on the bottom window. Yes, and so we're this trading month so far is higher than last trading's month. So we're making higher highs on the SPX. But if you notice the uh, SPX fix ratio, the bottom window, we're making lower highs. So we do have a divergence there. Uh, we got still six days or the market, I see month ends next Wednesday. Yes. So we've got about a week to go. Um, and it's most likely that divergence is probably going to carry through. And these monthly divergences normally last at least a month, a lot of times a couple, three months, and sometimes even longer. If you notice back in October 2021, you know, that decline lasted you know, you know, almost a year. So yes. anyhow, it's a, it's, it's a sideways market probably for the next several months. And to actually support that idea, if you flip to chart two. Okay. Uh, we talked about this chart uh, a week ago, right? But uh, anyhow, the top window is the uh, daily RSI for the SPX. When it gets above eighty, normally that's never the last high because if you get that much momentum to the upside, it's, it's never the final high. A lot of times you'll have consolidations, and that's what we're probably having here before it hits new highs, sometimes the consolidations last at least a month to up to three months. Uh, so the bottom window is the National Association of Active Investment Managers Exposure Index. All right. So so it shows the managers what they're doing. Back on July 9th, they were had exposure in the market of over a hundred, almost 104%. So they were on margin 4%. So that's kind of euphoria, I guess you might say. Yes. So you got two things going on. You got uh, the RSI saying you are going to make higher highs, but you got the exposure index that's probably going to flip the market sideways. So you got a sideways market, and after the sideways is done, you'll hit new highs. So, well, yeah, and You know what's interesting here, Tim, about the National Association of Active Investment Managers? Like when you look at this chart, folks, okay, you know, Tim has that red line going across the very top of it. And, you know, I understand, you know, that the, we were flipping sideways into a consolidation. That being said, every time that this actually comes in, you get, uh, you know, you get a little downdraft here, man. I mean, compared to where we are right now on this coming back, it looks to me like every time that that hits it, you go a lot lower than, <laughs> than we are right now. Yeah, I, I'm thinking we are, too. I don't know. Uh uh, actually, we can let's go to let's go to chart three and figure out where can we go. Okay, cool. I got uh, it. Yep. Yeah. So this is kind of a, just a small snapshot, and this thing will change as time goes forward. But I didn't put it on here. But the trend yesterday closed at one point two four, and if you look at the trend today, we're at one point two seven, and we've been holding you know, 1.2 to 1.3 all day today. Yes. So probably we're going to close in that vicinity. Right. You know, because it's pretty stable. Yeah, I have 1.3 so right point, now. Yep. Uh, well, you know, we got 1.2 for yesterday, so we do close above 1.2 today. Even though volume's light today, or it was light yesterday, it's going to be probably as light as again today, kind of eyeballing it here. Yes. Maybe... Uh, but, you know, volume's going to be lighter compared to the previous downdraft. Downdraft, that's kind of ex extreme, but compared to the down last week, if you look at the volume down last week, you know, that was a big jump in volume to the downside. Yes, it so was. To me, that was a, yeah, so that was a sign of, of, of weakness. So now we're trying to rally back, and we've got the trend on the close kind of helping that rally. So I think we're going to get back 
to where the gap is up around that 560. Um, and we're so at 554 thinking, right now, folks. Okay, cool. Yep, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, so the only reason why, because you got the trend uh, kind of high here. So that's probably going to push the market up to that gap. And so, you know, if you test the gap on lighter volume, at least 10% of lighter volume, the gap will be resistance. You already have the force to the downside of last week's decline. So I'm thinking this is upside consolidation for another another decline. And so, uh, and I got a blue, uh, kind of a blue shaded area there. I see that. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Yes, I do. Yeah. So you, you got a lot of trend readings. I listed trend readings all in that area, and you know, they're like anywhere from one point one nine all the way up to one point eight two, all in that vicinity. And so once you get panic in a region, normally when you go back into that region or price level you get panic again. If we do get panic again in that region, most likely that's going to be a support area. So I, I'm, I think it's a kind of a garbage market. So very short term, I think we probably get to 560. That's going to be resistance. Then we may fall back down to 540. If we get panic in there, the market may bounce back up again. And so I don't think we're, we're heading for a 10% decline here. I think the most you're going to get from high to low at worst is five percent, you know, and it's I think from the last high down to that five forty area comes in around four, four and a half percent. I have to go back and look at it. But yeah, it, it is amazing, so. Tim, that on all the pullbacks that we've really had for the you know, the past year, year and a half, they've been the panic has come in the market really quick, man. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, you're down like thirty S and P points, but maybe maybe forty or fifty folks. But all of a sudden, it's like, hold it, this is the end of the world. And as Tim has been explaining to us, well, if people think it is, guess what? We know it's not, and, and then you're going back up. So it's, yeah, you're going back up. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's true. Matter of fact, you know, if you look at those uh, the down period we had last week, you had that uh, there was no trend readings on that decline of any significance. I know that so was crazy. Right, I know. Stay right there, Tim. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 21, NASDAQ up 21. How about that? S&P's down one and a half. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim O'Reilly, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a prowl on us out there. We have the Dow down nine, NASDAQ up eight, S&P's off six and a half. And I have the third shot up here, Tim. Yeah, so another thing, uh, the bottom window is a VIX. Yes. And I was going to I was going to talk a little bit about the VIX, but when the VIX accelerates really fast, I, I do an RSI of uh, just an RSI on it. And I think I do a uh, rate of change, a two or three period rate of change. But anyhow, I had an indicator that had three uh, measures of velocity of the VIX. And when that market went down, let's say Tuesday be last Friday, all three of those indicators hit bullish levels. In other words, the VIX went up too fast. Okay. So, and that kind of predicted that the market would bounce this week. Yes. And so far it has. So I, I didn't show that indicator because, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't think we'd have enough time to cover it. But anyhow, the VIX right now, because it went up so fast, because the market went down so fast last week, so I, I still think we can possibly get to that 560 gap. And especially with the trend today, you know, holding up 1.3 right now, and yesterday's 1.24, I think even though volume's not behind it, we'll probably get to that upside gap 560. Then, then from there, you know, it's you got volume to the downside, light volume to the upside, and we'll maybe hit that 5 540 area. Now, 540 area, I don't think it's going to be a long term bottom. I think you'll just bounce again, and maybe this whole thing is sideways trading range for the next several weeks is what I'm thinking. Yeah, because so. it's, there's no doubt that, you know, that's uh, a small trading range, you know. I mean, because yeah. when, we're, when we're dealing with, you know, 5,600 on the, you know, S&Ps, uh, and, and what what is so cool, folks, if you actually look at it, you know, trading ranges, I mean, that just looks like a solid trading range, Tim, too, also, you know what I mean? Particularly because those, those trend readings came out so dramatically as soon as we got close to it. It's like, okay, man, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, so, it, but, but, you know, if, even if you do a Fibonacci relationship from the June low up to, you know, that July high, I didn't do a Fibonacci on this chart, 
but I bet it's around 38.2% retracement. If we hold that going all the way into, say, September, you know, you only do a, a 38.2% retracement sideways trading range, that would definitely be the halfway point of the next move up, if not even more than that. That's that would, strong, yes. If the market can't really pull back, it means the market's really strong. Right. So, no, the, that we'll is strong. See that I happens, think that, or that's conjecture. So no, no, I but, know. Uh, I well, what ends up happening? We know what happens in the summer. In the summer, you know, the bottom line, things get sloppy, things get slower, until they don't. <laughs> yeah, until, yeah, until they, you're right. When it gets too quiet, you know, look out. Yeah, exactly. Drop a bomb exactly. On it, yeah. So. There's no doubt. Yeah. Uh, let's go to chart four. Okay, I have it. Yeah, it's kind of like a repeat. We talked about this May thirty first. This uh, the bottom indicator is a monthly cumulative advance, no monthly up down volume uh, for GDX. Next window higher is the uh, cumulative advance decline for GDX on May thirty first. You know we talked on your show. Yes, if you get it past that mid Bollinger band, you're in for a multi uh, year rally because the previous times this has happened, you got you know a year and a half, sometimes three years. You know, market advances, market declines. So this is a big move that's going to last. You know, how, so I'm, I'm thinking it's going to at least last into next year. You know, probably late next year. Uh, so I don't know, but anyhow, it, you'll see some consolidations along the way. But in general, there'd be nothing like we've been going through. So I, I just want to repeat that. You know, the the monthly charts are on a buy signal. Yes. So. Uh, slip to chart uh, and the, chart five. You know what's so, interesting, Tim, is that the the gold market. It, you know, we know that's always challenging. You know, the gold contract itself couldn't take out those highs. That being said, though, the GDX has only backed out slightly, which is kind of cool. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like okay, you know, you, you figure the the contract itself. We're trading twenty four fifty six, and it couldn't make it by that twenty five. And change numbers, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and that's well, been going I'm on for a while because that's that's how this signal gets generated. Actually, that this strength, underlying strength in that market, right? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, this this is kind of saying that probably the gold stocks finally are going to start being stronger than the gold market is, or gold commodity or the yes. gold metal market. Right. So I'm I'm thinking there's a lot of energy. Or a lot of stocks are going to be, you know, back in 2000, I mean, you could throw in a, a dart at a gold stock, you know, on a map somewhere. That's a and fact. it went up 100%. It you did. Know? It didn't take any brains to make money back then. It did. And I'm, I'm thinking we're, we're kind of, I think we're entering in that kind of a same scenario. Yeah, no. Because since yeah. just 20 years ago. Right. Well, you know what happened? You saw those small caps take off like a rocket ship, and you know what happens, folks, is that a lot of those small cap stocks are commodity, small commodity stocks. You know, so I haven't done the work on it, but I suspect that that's what you saw because you know when you get a two dollar stock, of course, that you know goes to two fifty. Well, guess what? Percentage wise, that is a monster move. You know, and then those small caps that IWM move like beyond belief. But you know, a lot of it was the smaller ones. Okay, yeah, so I, I brought up the. Yeah. I get the, the chart, last chart. chart here, yes. No, chart, chart five. Uh, chart five, yeah. What we're talking about is, is the middle window there. This is HEY gold ratio. We could do it on the yes. XAU gold ratio. But this ratio hasn't really moved since 2016. It's just gone sideways there. We finally did break that blue trend line going back to the 2006 high, and we're finally above it. So we're, we're now gold stocks are starting to outperform gold, still in a small way. But when I want to point out on this, I do the RSI of the XAU gold ratio, and this is a weekly chart. And when that RSI of that gold HUI gold ratio gets above seventy, or actually is really about seventy-five, you usually get a consolidation, a near midterm type consolidation. In other words a multi-week, even a couple of months uh, consolidation. And I marked all those times uh, on the top window is the HUI. I can see and that, yeah. circled in reds are, are times he had uh, the RSI got above 70. So that's one thing I'll be looking for as, as this market keeps rallying. Right now we're about 64 okay. on the RSI. So we got 
it's got room to run. Uh, so nothing. But if it goes up too fast, the RSI will get up to run, you know, 70, 75. And they'll be late in the game. So yes. strength always comes kind of the end of the rally. So when things are too good to be true, chances are it's, it will be too good to be true. All right. So, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, we'll worry about that later. We got we got one more chart here. Yep. We got time to cover. We it. have time. We got a full minute. And I got the chart up. Go All ahead. Right. Yep. Uh, this is just a short term trend. Actually, I've been using an eighteen day average, and I kind of flip back and forth between a fifteen day average and an eighteen day average. A fifteen right now is working a little bit better, and the bottom window is a fifteen day average up down volume. Next window higher is the eight or uh, fifteen day average advanced decline. And along those two indicators hold above minus 10, which they have been since uh, March, the uptrend's intact. So hey. we're not even close to minus 10. No. So I think on a, even on a short-term basis here, we still have room to run. It's a beautiful thing. Well, listen, Tim, we appreciate the education, and we uh, look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday, on Thursday, rather. All right. See okay, you man. Love you guys. Have a great one. Have a safe right. one. Love you, man. Thank you so much. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.